Welcome to the Choose to Lead podcast with your host, Sarit Arbel. In every episode, Sarit and her guests discuss elements of leadership that affect the business owner's potential to achieve wealth and promote social responsibility. A win-win organization starts with good leadership. And now, your host, entrepreneur, Sarit Arbel. I'm super excited and I think I'm more nervous than the person who are, is going to be interviewed to interview uh, one of the people that I admire most, uh, Jeremy Walsh. Jeremy, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I was, I was honored and delighted that you asked me to be on your podcast. So thank you. Of course, of course. Uh, I'm sure that uh, just by you being here, there will be more listeners than ever before. You have so many admirers. But uh, just for the people who don't know you, uh, please tell us a little bit uh, what it is that you do and uh, uh, how come so many people uh, admire you so much. What is the magic? I, I, I have two different hats that I wear. Um, so one, one hat is uh, I am the owner of a business, a small business here in the great state of Rhode Island, which is only slightly smaller than Maryland, but it is officially the smallest state in the United States. Um, I own a computer business. Uh, I started the computer business back in 2002 um, and have since uh, you know, grown that business over the last you know, 19 years or so uh, to being on my own for the first couple of years. And now I have 18 employees and three retail locations where we kind of fix computers and help people. And we do have clients um, both in Rhode Island and throughout the country um, doing remote support and things like that. Um, but I also have another hat uh, that I wear, and that is that, you know, a couple of years, uh, immediately uh, to grow my business, I joined b and um, and uh, it did very well for me. I mean, I love the concept of b and I love the whole system. I love the networking. I love the people. Um, and yeah, I dove right into it with both feet. And within, within a couple of years, I was asking, how can I get more involved? And I became a director consultant. And then how can I get more involved? And I became an area director. And then how can I get more involved? And uh, as it turned out, the biggest referral of my life was to uh, help to develop the support team for their online platforms, uh, which is you know BNI Connect and now as well BNI Business Builder and BNI Online. Uh, so I did, I'm not a designer in any way. What we do is just answer questions about their systems, and we're kind of the global experts of everything that happens. So. Um, Part of my life is running the right click in that company, but you know the right click's biggest client is also now uh, BNI, and I spend a lot of my personal time, you know, heading up that particular initiative. So, and I will and I will attest that you're doing an amazing job on both, since uh, I'm a client both of BNI Connect as well as a client of the right click. Uh, I, I just admire the level of service that uh, you know your company is giving on all aspects. So, uh, Jeremy, uh, you started your business uh, what year exactly? Uh, I started in the beginning of 2002. Uh, so I actually I moved from Danbury, Connecticut, where I was working as a consultant in that whole Westchester area uh, down there, and uh, just kind of randomly picked up and moved. My wife and I just said, "Hey, you know what?" We can't afford to live down here in the, the Westchester area. Let's go try our luck in Rhode Island. And we didn't know anybody in the state. Uh, so, and we didn't even have enough money in the bank account to pay our first mortgage payment. Um, but we figured, hey, how hard could it be to start a business? And, you know, thank God for all the stuff that happened right. Uh, you know, we, were, we were young and stupid and, and that worked to our benefit. So uh, we weren't scared, jumped right in. That's, that's beautiful. So uh, I, I know that there are a lot of people who are thinking of starting a business, right? And uh, many of them, uh, you know, are exactly at this point where they're not even sure that they will be able to afford starting a business. So what do you think, uh, if somebody is listening to us and thinking about starting a business, what do you think, uh, I mean, do you have any words of encouragement how to really make this jump and belief if, you know, if the bank account may, may, may say something different? <laughs> well, first of all, it's got to be something that you love. I mean, if, if, you, if you're trying to start a business just for the sake of starting a business, you know, that you won't have enough passion in it to really make it succeed, you know, come hell or high water. So you know, make sure that it's absolutely something that you love. That would be my, 
my, my first advice. And if it's something that you love, then everything that you're doing to start it and build it and keep it going will become just part of your passion, which makes it a whole lot easier. Um, then all of a sudden, you know, when you're making other sacrifices in other areas of your life, you know, it, it doesn't feel like a sacrifice because you're doing it, you know, for this other passion that you love. Um, you know, all the rest of it is just mechanics, is learning about it, learning about, you know, how to do invoicing, learning how to, you know, do payroll and taxes and all that kind of stuff. And that's really where BNI comes in. You know, that's where BNI really helped me as a, because I didn't know anything about, I graduated with a degree in philosophy. So the only thing I knew about business was, you know, picking a couple of books up at the bookstore and trying to read about as much as I can. So, you know, having, joining BNI right away and having people around me that I could go to the accountant and say, okay, how do I do this? Or I can go to the lawyer and I say, oh, well, how do I do this? Do I need to get this? Do I need to get that? And a lot of times, you know, when you're in that situation there, you know, sometimes they, you know, they're going to charge you for it because that's their business. But sometimes they're just going to be there to help you out. But having that support system around you, none of us knows everything. Um, and get yourself involved with a group of people that can help you to take those next steps is, is the next most important piece of advice that I can give you. I, I think that's gold. I mean, uh, building a support system is really something that uh, the, the faster people will, will learn it, the easier their life will be. And uh, I believe that most of us entrepreneur, many of us had to learn it the hard way. I can definitely speak from personal experience. It took me a long time to learn to ask for support. So Jeremy, uh, tell me, when did you realize that you're a leader? Um, I think different areas of my life, you know, at different times, I think, um, you know, I, I've always had that kind of push towards leadership. I mean, ever since, you know, really you know, like high school, I mean, you know, being the um, you know, captain of the football team and being you know, National Honor Society president, you know, all that kind of stuff. I've always kind of moved in that direction of leadership. But, you know, I can say that it probably wasn't, um, wasn't really until I had to make a decision to accept the BNI Connect project um, that I really started becoming an actual leader. Um, and the reason I say that is, you know, you, you probably say, I'm all, oh, you, you were the president of this and you did Cub Scouts and you did this. And, but I think part of being a leader is learning how to delegate and learning how to allow other people to succeed around you. And that's the part that I never really did well up until that point, because what happened with BNI Connect is, you know, I was, I was running my business and I was, the business was growing and we we're doing great and all that, but I was a crazy micromanager. You know, everything had to be perfect. And of course, nobody could do anything as well as I did it because otherwise you'd have your own company and you'd be doing it yourself. And, you know, so I had these, these ridiculously high standards and kind of being a perfectionist and micromanager. When I, when I jumped into BNI Connect and started helping with that project, it actually kind of forced me to dedicate like 90% of my time to spinning that up, which means I had to allow other people in my company to step up and start to fill the vacuum of space that I was, le that, you know, I was leaving behind. So, you know, I, I think that that was an important lesson to me that took me a couple of years to learn, um, you know, in the process of, you know, what, what are good ways to allow people to, to, to succeed and lead on their own and then become kind of a leader of leaders, um, if that makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. And I, uh, I think that uh, it's a very important uh, component of becoming a leader is uh, letting other people grow around you and, uh, uh, more inspire them rather than tell them what to do. And uh, I mean, the level of uh, service that's coming out of your uh, out of your company, again, as a, as somebody who is uh, on the receiving end of this, uh, seems like you have been uh, doing a great job, really educating them to to a very very high level of service. Um, so, Jeremy, tell me, uh, um, at what stage? Um, it, it was, if I remember correctly, it was around 2008 that you uh, you got the BNI Connect project. Uh, 2011. Oh, so, 11. Okay. Yeah, it was actually I actually still had the email from uh, from Beth Anderson, who was the project manager at the time, that uh, invited me to uh, see if I wanted to come and 
uh, talk to her about providing support. You know, so it was it was late February 2011 when I got that email and pretty much jumped right in uh, you know, that next week. Um, and it's kind of all history from there snowballed very quickly. So let's uh, just help the people who are not familiar with BNI Connect. You're basically serving uh, uh, almost 280,000 people worldwide. Am I correct about that? Yep. Yeah. So BNI currently has about you know, 280,000 members in it. So we are uh, supporting the system for that many members. Uh, but there's also another probably 10 to 15,000 users of the system that aren't members. So there's like, for example, yourself, you're an executive director um, in BNI, so you don't have a membership, so you're not counted in that 280,000 people, but there's another, you know, 10 to 15,000 people, national directors, executive directors, regional admins, um, people like that. And we do provide 24 by five coverage. So it's not 24 um, seven, you know, we take our weekends off. Uh, the team does, we have very small teams, only about five people, um, but we do provide coverage you know, in every time zone um, during, you know, during the work week. So I have somebody in, uh, we have three people here in the United States, um, all in the Northeast right now, myself, um, Monique in Connecticut and Jessica in Massachusetts. But then we also have Samantha in Germany. Uh, we have Riaz in Malaysia and we have Jackie in Scotland. That's incredible. Really, uh, really impressive operation. And, uh, um, so you, you, I mean, you, when you started BNI was not as big, right? In, in 2011, what is it like half of the members and not as many countries? Um, yeah, I, I don't recall off the top of my head what the stats were, um, you know, back in, you know, back in 2010 or even back in 2002 when I first joined, um, I could look those up. <laughs> no, I'm sure you could. I have no doubt. But no, just I, I, I was just curious. But the, the point I'm attempting to make is that BNI was very big then, back then. And basically, you had to take some kind of uh, leap of faith. And, um, and I, my goal is that the people who are listening to us right now, you know, if they're, if they're at a junction where they have an opportunity to, to, make, to make a big jump and they uh, have some doubts whether or not they, they can trust themselves to really make it happen, or they're thinking of starting a business. But, but, but not only, from my perspective, people, people are leaders in everything that they're doing. So you don't have to be a, a business leader in order for you to be able to, uh, to, to be considered a leader. But you know, if you're a leader, a leader of your family, or even if you're a leader of yourself, you know, just, just by, uh, by committing to something and actually making it happen. So often uh, people are saying, oh, I'll, I'll do this or I'll do that. I'll go to the gym three times a week and this doesn't last very long. Uh, so even, even you know, committing to something and making it happen is, is a, from my perspective at least, it's, it's a matter of leadership. So my goal is that so, if somebody's li listening to us and they were not the, um, you know, they were not head of their uh, sports team uh, when they were growing up or, you know, they were not given a lot of opportunities to, to uh, present their leadership that they will be inspired and say, oh, okay, maybe I can make it happen. So do you have any words of recommendations for somebody like this or how to really make the first steps in leadership? I, first, first, you just have to recognize the desire to want to lead. And that's, that's kind of a big piece of it too, because you know, not, not everybody is a good leader and not everybody wants to be a leader. And, you know, it, if you're being pushed into leadership and you actually don't want to lead, that, that's kind of a recipe for disaster. So, you know, recognizing, you know, you know what, I, I do want to inspire other people or I do want to, you know, help other people get better or, you know, whatever, whatever that leadership, um, you know, definition means to you, first recognize that. Um, because if, you know, just like starting the business, if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, if you're, if you're leading simply because you want the title or simply because you want to stand up in the front of the room and, and get the recognition for it, then, you know, you're, you might have the title, you might have the, the recognition, but it's not going to do anybody any good. I think there's a, there's a term out there, I think it's called subservient leadership. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the, 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 the leadership I believe in anyway, is, you know, leading, you know, in order to 
actually be of service to other people, um, not just leaving for your own benefit, if that makes sense. Oh, it does, it does make a lot of sense. And I agree with you. Uh, if uh, somebody wants the title, they're probably, uh, they're probably a leader for the wrong reasons. Uh, but you also referred to, uh, to a leadership, to, to somebody who is not a good leader. Uh, and uh, I mean, what, what is not a good leader in your, um, I'd, like, I'd love to hear what you think is somebody who is a good leader. I mean, I, I do understand somebody who is uh, more service oriented, but I'd love to learn more from you. What, what do you think is a good leader and what do you think is not a good leader? So, well, I can tell you, uh, I'll give you two examples of times, you know, myself where I was both a good leader and a bad leader. Um, you know, and one of those is, you know, I, I was um, with Cub Scouts. So I, I helped, you know, my son was in Cub Scouts all through, you know, for whatever, five, six years that he was in Cub Scouts. And I was, uh, you know, both the, 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 the pack leader, you know, the, the den leader, which is just the smaller group of boys. Um, and I think I was a pretty good leader with that. Um, you know, we had the smaller group, we got to the point, you know, I, I would help to lead the meetings. We'd go on camp outs, lead them through the woods, have lots of fun, you know, teach them along the way and all of that. Um, and then what happened the past, uh, the, the last like year, I think it was the last two years, um, as we were, were aging up, the pack leader, so that's the person that's in charge of all of the den, so all of the, the whole group, uh, they needed to step down. Their sons were no longer involved. They've been doing it for 15 years. They were just ready to retire. And I volunteered to step into that one. And I kind of, I, I will say, I kind of failed in that particular role, um, partially because I wasn't prepared for it. Um, it was, um, you know, Dr. Meisner has a saying, there's working in your flame and working in your wax. Um, a lot of actually the PAC leadership um, was more about you know, planning and paperwork and you know all, all of that type of thing, which I am absolutely terrible at, right? So when I stepped into that position, I was complete, I went from doing something I loved, you know, leading the boys and, you know, having fun with them and, you know, being a constructive leader to being an administrative leader. And I was, you know, as I said, I was working in my wax the whole time and I was completely failing at it. I mean, I, I, I could say I almost drove that pack to falling apart. Um, because I, I could not lead them effectively. Um, and even the person that came in to replace me ended up then, uh, doing not the best job either, just because he inherited a complete and total mess that I left for him. So um, the pack has since recovered. They're on their road to recovery. They've got some good administrative leaders in there now, as well as good um, you know, morale leadership, I guess. Um, you know, recognizing what type of leader and where your strengths are, I think, is an important lesson in that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, sometimes uh, I, I can tell I can tell how difficult this is for you to, you know, talk about it because you took it so. I mean, you you are such a, a caring person. I'm sure you feel you feel so bad about uh, about not not giving your best uh, outcome. I'd say, although. You know the, the the truth of the matter is that it's you know whoever selected you uh, did not serve you by not really presenting to you what it means. So there is a chain uh, a chain of command there that uh, have supported the the process. So um, I, I think it's a great example for some for someone who is uh, a great leader but just not in the right place. It's like uh, uh, teach a fee, uh, teach a fish to climb or teach a, a cat to swim, right? And and you will fail for sure. So, um, and and uh, what what is a, a great example of leadership? So, well, one one thing, just going back on that, um, there's a great book. One of one of the there's a couple of like cornerstone books that I've read over the years. Uh, one is called the E Myth, and that you know, going back all the way to the beginning of this podcast. Uh, if you're starting a business, read that book, the E Myth. It completely changed the way I think about business. Uh, but the next one is good to great. And I think, you know, going to this lesson, there's a, there's a quote on that where there, there's two things you have to do. You have to have the right people on the bus, right? And you also have to make sure that they're in the right seat on the bus. So, you know, 
make sure that uh, and that that's playing to people's strengths as well. Um, so uh, example of great leadership. Um, are you looking for? Let's see. Um, I have to think about that one for a second. Um, what what are skills that you feel that you know can really support somebody to be uh, to be a leader? For example. Uh, you know, just, just from what you are describing about your history, you know, you were, uh, you were courageous. I mean, you, you had an opportunity, it was big and scary, but you took it. So, uh, or, um, you know, you were, uh, you were clear about your goal. Um, so, I mean, personally, I feel that there are endless skills that one can have for, uh, for being a leader. Um, um, or, you know, you and I, before this conversation, you said, I'm an open book, you know, and, and one of your, I think one of your um, leadership uh, 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 power uh, or one of your, I mean, Jeremy Walsh's, you know, power um, or, or magic is the fact that you're so authentic. Nobody, I mean, everybody knows that, I mean, your heart is right here. You know, you're very clear. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but these are just some examples that I'm asking you. So, you know, for somebody who's listening to this podcast and, uh, and, and, you know, maybe asking themselves if they have the skills, you know, what do you feel um, are important skills for somebody to, uh, uh, to know that they are a leader? Well, I think I think the most important quality of a leader is authenticity, and which is uh, you know, the nobody will follow you if they don't trust you or they don't believe in you. Um, so ha you know, having that authenticity—that's that's one of the things that I'm good at. Is you know, I'm an open book. You know, I'm, I'm happy to answer any question or um, talk about my failures as much as my successes, and I don't I don't have any shame in any of my failures because they make me who I am now. And failures are just, you know, one way to, to learn a lesson. So, um, but with that, you know, authenticity, if people are, if people don't trust you um, or you mislead them, then they're gonna be more hesitant to follow anything that you do or anything that you say. Um, and, you know, that, that whole, you know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, leading by example. You can't always necessarily lead by example, to show people exactly how to do something. Sometimes they have, you're just not good at it or they have to, they're gonna be able to do it better than you. But, you know, just like coaching a, um, you know, an all-star player, you know, I, I can't hit the ball over a fence anymore, but, you know, I can try to coach them on, on how to hold the bat right and how to swing right and all that, that type of thing. Um, but, you know, be, ha having that authenticity and having that energy, I think is really kind of, those qualities that we'd be looking for. Jeremy Walsh, you, I want you to know that you are my idol. I, I'm, I'm saying it truly uh, as, as a leader, um, every time that I have any interaction with, uh, with any of your services or with yourself as well. Um, and I think everybody who is, who is familiar with, with your services feel the same. Thank you so much for um, for sharing with us your leadership skills and uh, and thank you very much for your service. I I really appreciate it. My absolute pleasure. I'm I'm happy happy to be here and I'm happy to help you. So um, any anything I can do to assist, whether it's a podcast or resetting a password or helping <laughs> you with your computer, that's you know, that's that's what I'm here for. I'm here to, here to help. So thank You're you. You're a lifesaver. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>